Hi there everyone, uh, so today in this video I'm going to cover a quadratics problem that I saw in a textbook and I believe it's something you might see on an assessment for an introduction to quadratics unit type of stuff like that. So I saw this question and I thought it'd be a great like example problem to go over because it's not too hard for people that are uh, familiar with quadratics but for people that are getting started with quadratics and you've been watching my videos uh, this is something that's a little bit more challenging nothing too difficult if you've been following the videos and if you've been working through some content yourself this should not be something mind-blowing but it is something more on the lines of like a little bit more advanced so without further ado uh, this is a little bit new I'm I have the question in front of me here, but what I'll do is I'll uh, snip the question and I'll probably use some editing software to have the question up somewhere in this vicinity here. So it'll probably be up here for a while or maybe the entire video, but I'll work through the question here and I'm looking at the question myself. So I'll have the question up for you to see as well so you know what I'm working through. So the question, uh, hopefully I can uh, put it up here somewhere, is that there's two points. So one is negative nine zero and the other point is 19, 0, and both of them lie on a parabola. So that, that tells us that it's a quadratic problem because we have the word parabola there. And we also see our two zeros, right? Where our x, uh, where the graph touches the two, uh, where the graph touches the x-axis, that's what I meant to say. So those two points are clearly there. So they want us to determine an equation for its axis of symmetry as our first line of action. So if you remember what the axis of symmetry is, it's basically the line that cuts the parabola in half, and we actually have two points, or two zeros, that are on equal sides of the parabola, so they're exactly the same distance away from the vertex itself, so the axis of symmetry. So since we know that we have the two sides on a line and we need the middle, or we have two points and we need the middle, so we use our uh, midpoint formula or our axis of symmetry formula, it's not too hard, but our zeros are negative uh, 9 and 19, so that's the y values for uh, the x values for the two zeros. So my axis of symmetry, so my x sim, as one of my teachers called it, uh, is negative 9 plus 19 divided by 2. So you might ask why it's negative 9 plus 19 divided by 2, but for the, uh, the ones that are more familiar with quadratics, you know what I'm doing. I'm just adding the, adding the two points, and I'm trying to find their midpoint, right? Because they're the two zeros, and they're on equal sides of a parabola. So I'm just trying to find the middle, so the axis of symmetry. I'm trying to find the x-coordinate of that vertex. So negative 19 plus 19 is 10. 10 divided by 2, well that's just 5. So what's my axis of symmetry? Well my x sim is 5. Or you could say x equals 5 as my axis of symmetry. So that's the first question done. So the second question is the y-coordinate of the vertex so the y coordinate, right? So let's write this somewhere. So a vertex, right? So we actually know the x coordinate of the vertex. Well, how did we get that? That's the axis of symmetry, right? The line that cuts the graph in half. We already have that, the x coordinate of the vertex. And now they're giving us our y coordinate of our vertex, which they tell us is negative 28. Great, so now we have our vertex. So this is question A, let me just highlight that for you guys. And the question B is, determine an equation for the parabola in a factored form. So since it's a factored form, let's write down what we know so far about factored form. Uh, maybe I should switch colors for B, maybe that might help, just on the eyes a little bit. Let me know in the comments if switching colors helps you guys, I, I don't really know if it does. For me, it sometimes does, sometimes doesn't, if that makes any sense. So factored form for this equation. So y equals, right? So we don't know our a value yet. We're going to determine that. We do know our zeros, right? So our zeros are negative 9, 0 and 19, 0. That's in the question somewhere here, wherever I put it. So we know our zeros. So if our zero is negative 9, well, in my factors, I write the opposite, right? So it'll be x plus 9. And what's my other zero? Well, that's 19. So in my uh, brackets, I'll write the opposite. So it'll be x minus 19. Hopefully you're following that along. So now that we have our general equation in fact form, well, we don't have the a value yet. How do we find the a value? So this is where it gets kind of confusing for some people. Well, to find the a value, what you have to do is you have to sub in a point. If you remember back to linear relations where you subbed in a point to find the slope or the b, whatever you were looking for there, uh, now I have to sub in a point to find my a value. 
Well, what's the point we know for this graph? Well, some of you might say, well, we know a zero. Well, that's great. You can use a zero, but it's not always the most reliable, but sometimes you can go ahead and use a zero, but it's not the safest one to use if you know what I mean. You'll get, you'll understand that more when you move on ahead. But here we go. Here's a point for us to use. Negative 20, uh, 5, negative 28. So let's plug that point in. So I'm subbing in my vertex, so I'm going to sub it in and make an arrow maybe. So what's my y value? Negative 28, right? So a is what I'm solving for, that's what I'm solving for. So what's my x? 5 plus 9, right? What's my x here? 5 minus 19, right? So let's go ahead and solve. So 5 plus 9 is uh, 14, and 5 minus 9 is negative 14. Great. If you see something like this, 14, negative 14, 2, negative 2, you're doing it correctly. Your two factors or your two brackets here should contain the same number but different sides. So 14 times negative 14, I do have that in front of me. Uh, that is negative 196. So negative 196a is left on this side and I have negative 28 on this side. So a is actually equal to 1 over 7. You might ask why I went straight to that. So you divide both sides by negative 196 to isolate A. So that's just simple algebra. You should be familiar with that. If not, it's all right. You can just follow along. So dividing both sides by negative 196 to isolate A, and you get 1 over 7 for A. So now we have our A value. So let's write this in factored form. So Y equals 1 over 7. That's my A value, right? Now just write X plus 9. That's my first 0 negative 9, and my other is x, uh, x plus 9 is uh, x minus 19. There you go. That's the equation in factored form. And now the question, part C asks us to write the equation in standard form. Well, standard form means we have to go ahead and expand this. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to erase this. You can go back to it if you wish. Now we're going to expand this, because how do we go from factored form to standard form? Go watch my expanding polynomials video if you forget how to go from, uh, and there goes the cup. Uh, anyways, if you want to go from uh, factor to standard. So I'm just going to go ahead and expand. So we have 1 over 7, x plus 9, x minus 19. So first of all, we're going to ignore the 1 over 7 for now. We're going to deal with this first. We're going to expand this. So 1 over 7, you can stay on the outside. So first of all, x times x, so x squared, and then x times negative 19, which is negative 19x. I'm done with the x's, or well, I'm done with the x here. So next is 9 times x, which is plus 9x. Nine, 9 times negative 19, which I believe is, uh, what is 9 times negative 19? 171, negative 171. There we go. So now we have to collect our like terms inside of here. So let me just make a tiny little box here to show that this is separate. So x squared, so negative 19x and 9x, these are common uh, like terms, so I can collect those. Negative 19x plus 9, so a simple integer, so that's negative 10x minus 171. There we go. Now we have a quadratic equation in here, and we have the 1 over 7 on the outside. Well, what do we do with the 1 over 7? Now we have to bring it in. So to bring it in, I multiply 1 over 7 by everything in here. So 1 over 7 times x squared is simply 1 over 7 x squared. Or you could just write x squared over 7. Don't worry about that. This is correct. 1 over 7 x squared. Negative 10 over 7 x. Right? I'm just multiplying 1 over 7 times 10 x. So that's 10 over, uh, negative 10 over 7 x. And then 171 over 7 as well. You're just dividing everything by 7 essentially. You can even put a 7 on the bottom. Anyways, this is what the equation in standard form looks like. Hopefully this isn't too hard to follow. 1 over 7 x squared minus 10 over 7 x minus 171 7. 171 over 7. So there we go. That's this entire question done. So hopefully the question was here somewhere and you followed through. First we found our axis of symmetry because we had our two zeros. Then we found our equation in factored form by just subbing in our vertex. And then we found it in standard form by just uh, expanding out our factor form. So this is something you might see on a quadratics uh, test or assessment, whatever you're going through. And if you're just practicing, this is something that might help when you're practicing. So uh, hopefully this helped. I'll do a few more practice problems. Uh, just some easier practice problems, harder maybe. Uh, and check out my factoring videos if you're done with the first little bit of the unit. And yeah, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions that you want me to go through, like example problems, just leave them down in the comments. Hopefully you guys are 
interacting that way. So just leave them down there, I'll check them out as well. So uh, hopefully this helped, and uh, yeah, just let me know what you guys want to see next, and I'll be glad to do it.